Good morning and welcome into a matinee edition of BCL America's Action alongside my partner Andrew Hunt. I'm Craig Feta and we're so glad you can be with us wherever you're tuned in from around the Americas or around the world. On this Saturday morning we go back to Group C as Boca Juniors of Argentina take on Flamengo of Brazil in Estadio Luis Conde in beautiful Buenos Aires. And Boca Juniors needs to win both of their games this weekend and Hebraica needs to beat Flamengo and Boca needs to be ahead on point differential if they're going to advance to the quarterfinals. In other words, they need a lot of help, but it starts with this game today. If they lose, they're eliminated. Flamengo and Hebraica Maccabi advance. So this is essentially an elimination game for Boca, and they're going to have to look to their veterans, Jose Vildosa, Leo Menoldi, and Marcos Mata, and they're going to need a good game from Carlos Schottman, another veteran. He's been on the national team, and at age 36, he can still get you 20 points per game. Or he can be kind of lost in the background. You can't do that tonight if Boca are going to win, Andrew. Yeah, that's correct. And you mentioned this is one of those interesting things with strategy that you don't only need to win, but in order to advance, you're going to have, you to need some help, like you said, but also the point differential. So I'm looking to limit the scoring of the other team and, and score as many points as I can. So anybody that can get me a bucket, uh, I'm here for it tonight or today, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Just saw the starting lineup for Flamengo of Brazil. Flamengo, on the other hand, if they win just one game, they win Group C. They're another one of these teams with a ton of weapons, but they can also be maddeningly inconsistent at times. 
But as Gabriel Galvanini goes, that's how Flamengo goes, it seems. Galvanini is top 10 in both points and rebounds in the tournament and can be absolutely electrifying. But he can also get his get uh, sometimes get in foul trouble, and he can sometimes almost shoot his team out of the game when he's cold from outside. Flamengo will need good game today if they want to be sure of a win. Yeah, that's right, Craig. No bad game. No bad. Uh, <laughs> in any sport, any sport that you play, when you have a chance to seal the deal, whether that be knock someone out or stamp your own ticket, you hate to waste any of those opportunities. And today they have both. So let's see how they do. This is the first of two games today, as tonight we will have Sao Paulo and Nacional. That game starts at 9.40 p.m. local time, 7.40 p.m. Eastern time. Our officials for this match, Daniel Garcia of Venezuela, Cristina Dominguez of Mexico, and Kevin Lay of Canada. We're talking about point differential so far. Usually for the team that's in third place, the point differential kind of doesn't matter because they're way behind, but not in this case. Flamengo is only plus three. Hebraica Maccabi is at plus seven. Boca is only at minus ten. So they are not out of this by any stretch of the imagination if they take care of their business on the floor. So correct me if my math is wrong, but that means they would want to win by 11 points at least. Am I tracking that correctly? You, you know I'm not great with math, right? They, they would want to win by 14. Because right now, there's a 13-point difference between them and Flamengo. When it comes to them and Hiraika Maccabi, they would want to win by 18. But it all depends on how this one shakes out. Starting lineup for Flamengo is going to be, I beg your pardon, for Boca. Wayne Langston, Leo Minoldi, Marcos Mata, Jose Vildosa and Carlos Schottman. For head coach Carlos Duro. Duro assisted by Emmanuel Quintanz and Gonzalo Perez. Gustavo Conti for Flamengo. Assisted by Fernando de Oliveira and Cristiano Medeiros Pereira. And the atmosphere was great in Salapa last night. Looks to be equally as amazing here in Buenos Aires this morning. As Boca misses their first three-point attempt out of the gate. Yeah, no time wasted shooting there. They, they heard what I had to say earlier. <laughs> Key Deodato. You can't score if you don't shoot. Misses his first shot. Deodato is another veteran who, man, he can be an absolute scoring machine. He's usually a second-half player, though. He's in the starting lineup about half the time for Gustavo Conti, and about the other half of the time, he brings him off the bench. But he also just, he can light it up from three-point range. He's one of those guys who gets hot in a hurry and just stays hot as Carlos Schottman commits his first foul. Beautiful feed to Wayne Langston, but he couldn't get it to go with the left hand. Rebound there by Devin Scott. Now three-pointer from straight on. Rattles in for Kyle Manfio. It's an early 3-0 lead for Flamengo. The screen to get the ball to Minoldi, but he couldn't finish. And here comes Flamengo back the other way. Franco Balbi spins away from shot. One too many dribbles there by Devon Scott, but he gets it done inside. Scott yeah, nearly like lost were, it. Looks like they were zoning there, and the zone was collapsing on him as he got the ball in the post. Welcome into all our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV, in South America on DirecTV. 
and around the rest of the world on the BCL Americas YouTube channel. Nice ball movement by Boca. Oh, yeah. Will go so the drive, and Wayne Langston draws the foul. Yeah, I, love, I love the quick passes around the perimeter. What uh, gets on my nerves is when I make a pass, say if I'm in the corner, and I'm trying to swing the ball to the other side, and the person I pass to has to hold the ball to see if they have an opportunity. I'm like, just move it, get it over there. Which is what they did. One of those was even a touch pass. They didn't even catch the ball just immediately. So yeah, that very was very fast ball. That was it? Carlos Schottman. Second free throw good for Langston. And Boca are on the board. 5-2. What an atmosphere here in Estadio Luis Conte. High off the glass and in for Franco Balbi. I have not been to this particular arena before. It is tight. Kind of reminds you of one of those old high school gyms in the U.S. that was like built in the 20s and the stands are right on top of the court. That was exactly what I was thinking. It reminds me we're, we're back in Hickory again. <laughs> I was thinking the pit. <laughs> Oka zipping it around the outside again. Here comes Vildosa. Now Langston. Back to Vildosa. Oh, pretty reverse by Vildosa. What an awkward angle to put that shot up. And he made it look like that was nothing. Step back for Balbi for three. Splash. Biggest lead of the game yeah, now Craig, for Flamengo at six. They've, they've got the gym rocking here in the morning. That's great. Yeah, they know how to do it in Buenos Aires. Y Teodato blocks that shot. Y Teodato still playing at a very high level at age 32. Guy who's been on the national team. Now Mata for three, and that's good. Didi Luzada into the game now. Threads the needle and count the bucket. My goodness. Foul's going to be on Marcos Mata. Yeah, great body control here. at Devon Scott, 29-year-old American from Columbus, Ohio. Finished his collegiate career at Philander Smith in 2016. Another guy with a passport full of stamps, New Zealand, Argentina, Israel, Brazil, Korea, Italy, Dominican Republic, Mexico, the Philippines. He was all NBB in Brazil in 2020 with a 14.3 per game average. Mata missed that shot. Manfio over to Lusada. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, just now getting to 10. Now the drive and the cut by Deodato was blocked. That three rings out. And Langston and Lusada, thank you, beg your pardon, that's Deodato. Battling for it on the floor. And Andrew, that's not the first time you're going to see me mix up Guy Deodato and Didi Luzada. Very similar in stature. And that one and that stylized seven on the back of Luzada's uniform always gets me confused. I can't tell the difference sometimes on a quick glance. Mike Tavares is checking in now for Flamengo. Hey, when it comes to numbers, I definitely sympathize with you. We all know my struggles. <laughs> Speaking you of know, numbers, like too, to... 
I'm, I'm just going back to what you said earlier about needing to win by 18 and 14, and I just, I don't think I've ever had a time where I said, all right, guys, let's go out there and beat this team by 18. I'm just like, <laughs> I just want to win. Like, you know, it could be right. two points, uh, 10 points would be nice. Uh, but yeah, never, I don't think I've ever just said, we need to blow a team out by 20. Like, that's what should happen today. Franco Balbi does a little uh, Curly Neal impersonation there, down to the floor and comes back up, never lost the dribble. Deodato airballed that three-point attempt, rebound grab by Shotman. We talked about Shotman in the open, Andrew. Shotman's been largely invisible so far. Takes the drive here, kicks it out. Three on the way for Bill Dosa, no. Yeah, that's not going to count. That was interesting. I, I, I thought a defender got a, a just a small piece of that. And I'm not sure that shouldn't have counted. It went on top of the backboard and hung up there momentarily, but it didn't come into contact with the basket structure. And then it rolled forward and fell in. I think that should have counted. Mainoli on the way for three. That one counts. Yeah, my, my assumptions are, I don't know, kind of seemed like it should have gone over the backboard but didn't, which makes me think there's something back there. I, I really don't see anything, but. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell if there's any kind of, I don't know, lip around the outside of the backboard, in which case, yeah, then it wouldn't have gone. Oh, what a finish under the bucket. Wayne Langston. And the fans love that. Langston gets Boca to within one, and he's got a free throw coming. <laughs> Langston with the flex on the floor for effect. Yeah, this, this crowd's got me amped right now. I'm bobbing in my chair. Quiet down for Langston's free throw and he ties it up. <laughs> I like how they weren't completely quiet. They're like, hey, we're, we're not going to stop the rhythm here. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, lower it <laughs> a little bit softer now. A little bit. That's what I, that's what I felt like that was for the free throw. <laughs> Andrew Hunt visiting the Dexter Lake Club. Three at the other end is up and good for Didi Lusada. Yeah, you're right. That at seven almost looks like a question mark there. Yeah. And off to Shotman. He launches the long three. Missed that one. Carlos Shopman is one of those guys when he was in his prime. When he was on the floor. The opposing team would yell, shooter. Oh, so a lot like me. Well, maybe if you were on the gun range. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Cuello into the game now for Flamengo. So it's Cuello, Luzada, Scott Machado, Kyle Manfio, and Yvonne Scott for Flamengo right now. That three from the corner, circles out. Luzada thought about the three. Man game there with Devin Scott. A little okey doke on the screen. Out of bounds and a little stay with Flamengo. Thought that would have gone the other way. You get a good look at Gustavo Conti in his sixth season with Flamengo. It's a 
Sebastian Vega checking in now for Boca as Captain Marcos Mata sits down. You know, I get the feeling the fans at this end of the court, Andrew, need to uh, step it up a little bit here. Folks at the other end going nuts. Singing and dancing, and playing the drums. Folks at this end are just largely silent. Yeah, and this defense is the there by basket. Boca. Right. Well, it looked like Sebastian Vega could have just taken that the whole way himself, but it worked out better as Leo Mainoldi, another one of those veterans, gets the three pointer when we're tied back up at 16. Now a turnover. Boca looking for the lead. They've got a two on one. Mainoldi has the shot blocked. But a foul is called on TD Luzada. Angle, but it sure looked like now yeah, there's the contact. Oh, yeah, no question about it. Gotta keep your hands straight up. And the fans behind the Boca basket now, the other ones making a noise. Now they need to settle down, see if they. Yeah, they just keep it going. I think they're. <laughs> They're motioning the other side. They're trying to get him in the game. Yeah, it could be. I think we'll We've see got here. Spirit. Got yes, we do. We've here. got the spirit. How about you? We need to get that chant going. I think that's what they're doing right now. I'm pretty sure. So Boca with their first lead. 17-16. The corner back outside for Cuello. Shot clock at eight. Cuello working on Shotman. Cuello gets it out to Tavares. He launches the long three, and that is good. Mike Tavares with the shot clock winding down. Get that one from the beach. Barber at the other end. Sebastian Vega commits the foul. And that's a good foul. We saw him go across the arms, but he definitely got balls. So we saw that a couple times last night where guys would go across the arm, not play the ball, and they were whistled for the unsportsmanlike. Yeah, they need to take a course at the Andrew Hunt School of Fouling. <laughs> now open. First free, throw, uh, first free throw by Devon Scott is good. I've got my own what basketball academy. <laughs> What a great camera angle. You can see why it's so loud in here, that low roof. Solid structure. All that sound just bounces right off back onto the court. Well, and then you mentioned the seats are elevated by too. Three. Yeah. So they're even closer to the roof. Juan Guerrero, 90 seconds to play in the first quarter. Moving around Barber now feeds Barber. Barber off the glass and in. Great shot by Raven Barber. 32 year old American gets Boca back to within two. Balbi near midcourt calling for some help to come over. In my case of Otto obliges. Well, Balbi. Misses off the glass and Boca with another chance to tie inside of a minute to play first quarter. Guerrero, Emmanuel Rodriguez, to Jose Di Filippo. Shot clock at eight. Guerrero, Di Filippo. He's got that range. Is that a travel? Yep. 
Filippo made a great sidestep, drained the shot. He still wants to know what's going on. I, I thought he traveled when he started to dribble. The, the end, yeah, yeah. I, know, I don't think it was the travel on the, the shot. shot. I think we're fine. So it stays 21 19. Now Di Filippo commits the foul. And again, I don't understand that foul right there. That he was in front of the offensive player and he just shoved him. I, I, I don't get that. He thought he was going to get beat and had no help. That's that's what I. This is the only thing I come up with because he had to get under that screen, and then he was kind of no man's land out there. Uh, wasn't able to see if he had anybody in the middle or not. Yeah, he had help at the basket, and he had help in the corner. So Di Filippo gets tied up. And was that a foul on Barber, or rather Mike Tavares? Yeah, I think they got Tavares for over the back. He was trying to take a prom picture. <laughs> And the official held up. Oh, well, he did hold up eight for Tavares. I thought he held up seven there for a moment, but he did have three fingers on that second hand. Di Filippo hits both free throws. I beg your pardon, he just hit the second. So with 13 seconds to play in this first quarter, Flamengo, the final possession. Eldado, his drive unsuccessful. Now Di Filippo, his pass intercepted, couldn't get it back. And we go to the end of the first quarter with Flamengo on top by the score of 21-20. Entertaining back and forth first half. It was mostly Flamengo. Boca tied it twice, I believe, and took the lead at 17-16. As we look at the shooting percentages, Flamengo a sparkling four of eight from three-point range. Unusual for them because they come into this game dead last in BCL Americas in three-point shooting percentage, 23.8%, 34 of 143. So you have to think that They'll come back to earth a little bit on their three-point shooting. Individually for Boca Juniors, Raven Barber, two points. Jose Di Filippo one. Wayne Langston, five. Leo Benoli, seven. Marcos Mata, three. Jose Vildosa with two. For Flamengo, Franco Balbi with five points. Didi Luzada, three. Kyle Manfio, three. And Devon Scott, seven. Scott's also got five rebounds already. Mike Tavares, three points for Flamengo. Andrew Hunt, anything stick out to you after one quarter of play between Boca Juniors and Flamengo? Well, like you said, it's uh, been pretty even thus far, so nothing to make me think as of yet there will be any kind of blowout, which is not so good for uh, Boca Juniors. Uh, but we'll see if they can uh, keep up their, their shooting. That's that's the way I, I think I've seen a few times when they're kicking it out. We saw a couple times on a fast break or something. Uh, you mentioned one time there was somebody that had a pretty good look at a lane. They threw it out for the three. I think that's kind of the strategy here is if I have a chance to get more points, I might see if I can, you know, get a shot that produces more points. So we'll see if that continues. I Again, you keep shooting them. Three-pointers usually going to be not a great percentage, 50% or less, 50% if, if they're good. Um, the more you shoot, usually the worse, but they kind of need him at this point. So I expect uh, some hoisting in the second half. Or excuse me, second quarter and the second half. The whole rest of the game, they need to score. <laughs> I'd like to remind you, though. I, I kind of like it. You put, that you said uh, you didn't see anything that would indicate a blowout. And then... Halcones 
blows Real Esteli out of the water in the fourth quarter. Ended up winning by 25. Yeah, I was I was thinking exactly of that when I made that statement just now. <laughs> but it, yeah, but again, in this were, case, you, you, were, you were walking that back a little bit. There's there's one team that's trying. They need to beat the other team by a, a good margin. So I think you know it makes it that much more difficult. I feel like most blowouts come when you weren't really trying. Things just kind of click. As Wonderful ball movement there by Boca by as Manuel Rodriguez scores with the left hand. And now Boca back on top by one, 22 21. Corner Deodato gets it out to Devon Scott. That foul. It's going to be on Juan Guerrero. And if you have not already, a blocked shot on the three-point attempt, and there's going to be an easy bucket for Sebastian Vega. Vega gets the what block, shot leaks out. <laughs> now the lob a little too high for Tavares. And the drive and finish. Nicely done by Scott Machado. But if you have not already, go to the BCL America's website as Vega launches a three there. And look at the picture that accompanies the story for the Halcones win over Real Esteli. The ball just about to go in the cylinder. Jordan Glenn from the corner on a three-point shot holding the pose as Jared Ruiz watches. That's really one of the greatest sports photos I've seen. Yesterly bench looking on. Just an amazing shot. Sorry, I kind of nerd out about things like that. <laughs> and, and while I've been nerding out, Flamengo took the lead back at 25-24. <laughs> I let you nerd, Craig. Nerd it up. <laughs> Go for it. Vega misses the three. Scott Machado ends up with the rebound in the corner. Two minutes elapsed in this second quarter. Machado taking it all the way himself. Has the shot blocked by a flat-footed Sebastian Vega. But a foul is called. If they're going to get anybody, they're going to get Juan Guerrero. Yeah, because Machado blocked that shot flat-footed. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that foul. Guerrero. I think he braced up well and didn't, you know, didn't make any excessive contact. I think it was all initiated by the offensive player. So Machado to the free throw line. He's five of eight from the stripe heading into this game. Gets that one to go in. myself with my head bobbing to the rhythm of the drums even the I was just getting ready to say and then the substitution whistle went off for the horn and it, it's even in rhythm with the with the drum yeah. beats so it's it's like a it's like a uh, techno track or a house music track <laughs> everybody screams <laughs> <laughs> Vega thought about the three, gets it back out to Vildosa. Now Vega steps back, and an offensive foul called on Vega. I going to say he pushed off and created separation. Yeah, we'll see at it here. Here's the drive, and he pushed him back. 
feel like the defensive player sold that a bit. Yeah, but at least he didn't throw his head back. <laughs> if you've been following our broadcast, you'll hear that I am a uh, one-man Don Quixote on that uh, on that particular issue. Lozada for three, missed. Rebound by Langston. I didn't know that I'm going to make it my life's mission to eliminate the throwing back of the head, and try to sell a foul. But as I approach my retirement years, I may need a hobby. Don't get off my lawn for this guy. Only, why is he <laughs> throwing his head back? Just stop it. In my day, we would never throw our head back. <laughs> Even if we did get fouled. Yeah, back where I come from. No autopsy, no foul. <laughs> Inside seven minutes to play now. Second quarter. The action has slowed a little bit here. Galvanini for three. I didn't recognize him with the blonde hair. Galvanini hits Based the on three that pointer, shot. and he Based puts Flamengo up by him. sixth. And Boca Juniors wants timeout. Who is that blonde-headed man? Galvanini ninth in scoring in this tournament at 17.3 points per game. Oh, and there's uh, uh oh, Boca Junior's doing it again. You can't do that. This this must be a very secret play. This is a play no one no one else has ever run ever. Galvanini ninth in rebounding as well at 8.3 boards per game. But he's 3 of 13, now 4 of 14, from three-point range on this tournament. With that kind of secrecy, this is a guaranteed basket, 100%. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be at least a four-point mm -hmm. play. I think it could be an eight-point play, potentially. I want to know where that ball just came from. <laughs> so Mike Tavares, no, this is Franco Balbi. Hits the free throw. Jose Vildosa whistled for the technical foul prior to that timeout. I did not see what Vildosa did. If anybody, you would think it would have been Juan Guerrero who was whistled for that foul. Vildosa now on the drive. Can't get it to go with the left hand. <laughs> and Scott Machado <laughs> demonstrating what he did. It's one of my old moves. And Galvanini. Uh, he, he had a little shove there that he forgot to throw into his reenactment. <laughs> yeah. For... For those watching at home, you can have your arms up. This goes for the push-off we had earlier. Let's see what this play is, and I'll explain. Shotman on the left wing. Now Vildosa. Back over to Minoldi, and now doing Shotman. the same thing. Shotman open three, no good. Rebound, Langston. Now Vildosa from way outside. That's off the mark, and it'll be Flamengo ball, leading by seven. Yeah, they were running the same action there that they did originally. But yeah, you gotta. Anytime you're using that forearm, you can't extend. You can put them up, and you can use it to kind of make a, a nice little box for yourself. And you can move your feet, and and therefore kind of put your arm into somebody. But the minute you extend that hand out and you uh, lock that elbow, it makes it look. Even if you don't actually do it, it makes it look as if you're you're shoving somebody out of the way. It, usually, you are. Langston draws the foul under the bucket as Devon Scott had 
Great position there. What the what the greats will do is they'll they'll hold up that forearm and they'll move. I, it's it's hard to explain without showing, but they'll kind of move their shoulder. So their arm is going up and down, but the angle of their elbow doesn't change. And so they'll kind of get in get in some space with the arm down, pressed to their torso, and then raise it up to uh, you know make the space. Okay, I see what you're saying. And that was a great visual demonstration as well, although nobody could see it in your home studio. I just looked around to see is how does I know what I'm doing? Biggest lead of the game now for Flamengo, 33-24, 5:45 to play, second quarter. Strong drive by Marcos Mata, and he'll go to the free throw line. Shot at a three-point play. Foul's going to be on Didi Luzada. He puts his hands up with a foul committed prior to that. Welcome in to all our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV, in South America on DirecTV, and around the rest of the world on the BCL Americas. YouTube channel. I did not see that free throw. Must have been a little time warp there. He completed the three point play, but now it's back to 9 36 27. You were probably just really envisioning what I was explaining about using your forearm to make space and just lost all control of viewing actual reality. <laughs> Very that well be. Marcos Mata lays it in with the right hand. He's got eight. Flamengo by seven. Oh, missed the cutter there. Yeah, I think he was trying to throw that across and hit the <laughs> rim. Now, now Shotman decked <laughs> by Devon Scott. Devon Scott immediately runs over and helps him up. That was a hard foul, but not intentional. Oh, no. Shot. Oh, we shouldn't Shotman. have shown that replay. Yeah, didn't need to throw the head back. <laughs> but Galvanini with the blonde hair is really throwing me off. It's a platinum blonde. Yeah, I don't have it. I know, I know I've mentioned this a couple times, but it just, this is really in my head about the whole point differential thing. I just can't help but think if I'm on focus team right now, I look and I say, okay, I'm down seven points. I can deal with that. But then if I know the differential that I also need to beat them by, I'm like, that's what I just keep thinking. I said, I'm down 25 right now. <laughs> it's, it's so tough mentally. Well, I don't think you can think about that. You have to think about getting the win first and foremost. Langston goes up and dunks it in the grill of Galvanini. My goodness. Galvanini at the other end. Working on shot, getting it out to Machado. He launches the three, missed wide left. Now Boca, can they make a little run here? Mata, Langston, into the corner for Vildosa for three. Splash! And now Gustavo Conti wants a timeout. As Boca are back to within two. Just a great catch and shoot in rhythm. Nice rotation. Splash City. Yeah, that was definitely a good possession. Fans really made <laughs> No 
double enough for him to get points in the paint. You know, I know this was mentioned quite a bit earlier, but that uh, the ball going over the back of the basket, I just realized that the yeah. the light that signals that the shot clock has gone off, that is around the basket, and I'm betting that's what it what it uh, touched. For those unfamiliar with the rule, if most of these baskets normally set up on the floor, there's usually nothing hanging in a traditional gym like you might see in a high school. A lot of the, the baskets are hanging from the ceiling, the rafters, and there's some kind of support up there that if the ball hits that, it's considered out of bounds. On these baskets, if there's anything attached to the back of the basket, if the ball touches that, it's out. Uh, and if it rolls over the top of the basket, you know, to the baseline area, that's also out. But usually the rule is if it rolls along the top and happens to come back off in the front, legal legal ball, live ball. And a lot of times on those basket supports, the shot clock and game clock are directly above the backboard as well. And a lot of mm -hmm. times you'll see a shot go up and hit the shot clock, at which point it becomes dead. But in this case, the shot clock and game clock are set back about three feet on that basket support. Another three-point miss. And now Boca with a chance to tie it up, perhaps take the lead with a three. Langston working on Galvanini. Cannot get it done there. Galvanini working on Langston now at the other end. Kicks the pass over to Cuello. Oh, in traffic, Tavares couldn't finish. Now Boca with another chance. Mainoldi jacks the three up, no good. Inside three minutes to play, second quarter. If I'm Boca, I'd, I'd like to go in with a lead. 1.2 point, 2 point, 3 point, don't care, just a lead. That'd be nice. Galvanini short on the three-point attempt. And again, Boca with a third opportunity to tie it up here. They miss another three-point attempt. Galvanini another rebound. Now Machado for three. That rattles out. And again, Boca with is this their fourth or fifth? Trip down the floor with a chance to tie. Shopman. Oh, beautiful screen roll to Langston. A little too far under the bucket. Mainoldi. He was out. <laughs> yeah, missed the three. And Langston had not established himself before coming back in and catching that rebound. There's another, there's another lesson for any of our Young Hoopers getting a basketball education this Saturday morning. Anytime you're out of bounds in basketball, you, you do no good there. So as soon as you can get back in, you need to. Defensively or offensively, does you no good to be out of bounds. One forty-five to play in this second quarter. And now Diodato launches the three and misses. Langston leaks out, lays it in, and we're tied up at 36. Finally, Boca able to connect. Langston's got nine, and Gustavo Conti takes time out with a minute 33 to play. It's a great way to stick with it here, as we see Langston with his lay-in. If I'm the coach for Boca now, I say, hey, listen, We've just held them for the last minute, minute and a half, I believe, uh, to no points. Let's see if we can just continue that for another minute and a half. And now then, if we can score one or two buckets, they go into halftime with a just a slight lead, as I mentioned, which would uh, help with not needing to gain all of the points uh, in the second half. Flamengo, 6 of 17, 35%. And that's 
four of 15 for 26 percent. Boca. Like to see that number come up a little bit for them. Ninety seconds to play, second quarter. Machado brings it up, hounded by Vildosa. Let's see what Gustavo Conti has drawn up. Back outside of Machado for three. No. <laughs> Got hung up on that light again, and this time it fell behind the backboard. So that unquestionably a out of bounds. And now the fans at both ends really getting into it. Yeah, they really got something to cheer for here. Vildosa. Spinning into the lane for the lead. Won't fall in. Langston had a shot at it. Didn't get it. But the offensive rebound tracked down by Guerrero. Now Langston driving baseline. Goes reverse. Off the glass. No. Deodato at the other end. Gives Flamengo the lead back. Yeah, they needed that to stop the bleeding here. That's a good thing now. Now, if I'm the Flamingos coach, I uh, I say, hey, now we need to be the ones to stop them and not let them score so we can go in with a two point or better lead. That bucket by Machado, or beg your pardon, by Deodato, stops a 9 0 run by Boca. Forget one more game coming up tonight. So we go back to Group B. Sao Paulo and Nacional. 9.40 p.m. local time, 7.40 p.m. Eastern time. You'll be able to see that one as you've been able to see all these games in the USA on FanDuel TV in South America on DirecTV and around the rest of the world on the BCL America's YouTube channel. He's Andrew Hunt. I'm Craig Feta. Hope you've been enjoying this one. It's been a back and forth affair. Flamengo has mostly controlled the game. They got their lead up to nine. But Boca has come back to tie it up on two occasions. Boca even managed to take a three-point lead at the start of the second quarter. Let's see what Carlos Duro has drawn up here. Mata to Mainoldi. Back to Guerrero. Shot clock at seven. Guerrero takes it all the way himself. Puts up the hanger in the lane, and we're tied back up at 38. That's a, I'm going to call that move the hokey pokey. He put his right foot in and then he took it back out and made a basket. <laughs> Locked down to five. Right side to Cueo for three. No good. It is good. <laughs> Went up top off the backboard and fell in. Still counts. Still counts and it's 41-38 at half. Got to be a little heartbreaking for Boca. They worked so hard, and at the end of the period, it's a lucky break for Flamengo, and Boca finds themselves down three going into the locker room at halftime. Boca you see some disappointment on the face of the crowd, too. For sure. Boca Juniors 52% from two point range, 41 overall. 4 of 15 from 3, 6 of 8 from the free throw line. Boca leading the rebounding battle by 2. Flamengo, uh, 13 of 32 for 40.6% overall. 7 of 19 from beyond the arc, 36.8%. And Flamengo, a perfect 8 of 8 from the free throw line in that first half. Just 4 turnovers for Flamengo and only 6 for Boca. So a very clean first half. 
For Boca Juniors individually, Juan Guerrero, two points, three rebounds, two assists. Wayne Langston, nine points, four boards. Leo Manoli, seven. Marcos Mata, eight points, six rebounds. Jose Vildosa, five points, two boards, four assists. Raven Barber, quiet so far, just two points. Jose DiFilippo has one. Manuel Rodriguez, two. Carlos Schottman has been quiet. 0 for 2 shooting, no points. And Sebastian Vega with two points and three assists. That's what I'm saying. If Boca can get anything out of Carlos Schottman, you know, they maybe go into the locker room up at halftime instead of down three. Flamengo, meanwhile, Franco Balbi, nine points. Martin Cuello, three points. Guy Deodato has two points, three boards. Kyle Manfio, three points. Devon Scott, 11 points, seven rebounds, two assists. Marco Filipovity has not played for Flamengo. I have to wonder if he's nursing an injury because not only would he have seen minutes, oftentimes he's in the starting lineup for Gustavo Conti. So we'll have to assume Filipovity's injured. Gabriel Galvanini, just three points. Only took two shots in that first half. Didi Luzada, three points. Scott Machado, four and three assists. And Mike Tavares rounds out the scoring for Flamengo with three points. Again at halftime, Flamengo leads Boca Juniors 41-38. We will be back live from Estadio Luis Conde in Buenos Aires with second half action in just a few moments.
Welcome back to Estadio Luis Conde in Buenos Aires, Argentina. La Bombo Norita, it's known as. Nicknamed such after La Bombo Nero, the Boca Juniors soccer team, their stadium here in. Buenos Aires. I remember driving to Estadio Obras Sanitarias. We would drive right past La Bombonero every morning. Just a distinct, huge stadium right off the uh, well, their version of the interstate there. Just a massively imposing presence. So, alongside like Andrew Hunt, alongside Andrew Hunt, I'm Craig Fada. As we head to the second half here, Flamengo on top by three, 41 38. After a lucky bounce at the end of the first half there for Flamengo to hit a three pointer. And Andrew Hunt, as we start off the second half here, peer into your magic eight ball once again and ask you what you think the second half is going to hold. Well, Boca is kind of in a situation where they're uh, they're pretty desperate for for points. Like you said, they they need to get the win, but they also need more points. Um, that's just going to be a pretty tough hill to climb. I expect that they'll just break that down each possession. They, they got to value the ball both on defense and on offense. So they're looking for points every offensive possession, and they're looking to limit second chance opportunities uh, for Flamengo. I'm, I'm not super optimistic on how successful they will be. That's that's a pretty insurmountable uh, task in my in my eyes. So the lead back to five after the free throws by Lusada. I still maintain that Boca is going to have to get something out of Carlos Schottman if they are going to be successful in the second half. Likewise, yeah, with, Flamengo. With deficit, yeah. Sorry, with a deficit like that, you're going to need help from Every, everybody on the team. So Shotman's going to have to get into it, and they're probably even going to need someone that maybe doesn't normally score a lot to contribute a little bit, a little bit more than they normally would. Shotman drives, dishes it out, three on the way, missed. And I also still maintain that Flamengo is going to need to get something more out of Gabriel Galvanini if they're going to put this one away. Galvanini not starting the second half on the floor for Flamengo. Galvanini just three points in that first half. Out of bounds, and it'll be Boca Ball. Welcome into all our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV, in South America on DirecTV, and around the rest of the world on the BCL Americas YouTube channel. Dosa takes it all the way himself and it falls in. If that had not fallen in, Wayne Langston was there to thunder that one home. Balbi back up top. Oh, Bill Dosa commits no. the foul on the three point shot by Guy Deodato. And he's going to go to the line for a chance at a four-point play. Oh, you can't do that. I mean, he, he beat you. Don't make it worse. And I was about to say that I didn't like that he passed up the first shot. <laughs> he, he had a pretty good look originally and then yeah. took a dribble to the side that wasn't very substantial. He didn't very uh, create very much space, but here we are. The result speaks for itself. 
four points is better than three. <laughs> the rare four point play. E. Deodato puts Flamengo back up seven. Their biggest lead of the game was nine in the first half. Boca has not led by more than three. Shotman misses the three point attempt. Seven yeah, when you can see the play in the third quarter. So far in this second half, you can see that Boca's trying to put some points on the board and shoot outside, but as you see, <laughs> Flamengo good at shooting outside so far. That can just really kill you because if you miss those shots, it, it has the almost exact opposite effect on you. The lead's now 10 after the tray by Balbi. And Galvanini's pass intercepted. Balbi, no look after the Euro. Manfio, his three misses. And the rebound ripped down by Mata. Now see that one, I shot think Mata should have shot. Mainoldi, crafty veteran off the glass and in. And he has a look for the official about no foul call there. But at least he got the points. Leo Mainoldi with nine now. Ties Wayne Langston for team high honors. Deodato on the drive, won't go. Offensive rebound by Devon Scott. Whistled for the foul. There's the rebound, and then there's the foul by Scott as Galvanini. No, beg your pardon. That was Kyle Manfio. Was going back up. We could look at Devon Scott having a seat. Manfio's first free throw misses. Second one up and in for Kyle Manfio. Those were the first two free throws of the tournament for Kyle, Kyle Manfio. And now a steal and a two hand dunk by Guy Deodato. And now Carlos Duro wants a timeout. Deodato's got eight. And the lead is now 11, biggest of the game. <laughs> what a great expression on Guy Deodato's face. We're gonna get a good look at it here. Hello, Guy. This is tough. I don't, I don't really know what you do if you're if you're Boca right now. Their crowd is still into it though, which I love. Loyal to the end. They will be. Make noise the whole way through this one. But Flamengo with a 12-4 burst to open up this third quarter. You can see this is, illustrates what I was talking about: the three-point percentage being so bad. Uh, it's obvious you don't get many points when you're missing shots. The problem is, especially with three-point looks, you miss those, it gives the other team more opportunities for fast breaks, <clears throat> excuse me, where you get a dunk like we just saw uh, right before this timeout. That's the kind of stuff you're giving up if you can't convert on, on three-point looks because rebounds go further out and it's just tough to corral. Yeah, that's Boca just four of 19 from three point range for 21%. And it was Flamengo there is... coming into this one who was last in three point shooting percentage at 23.8%. Udek was next worst, so it's not like Boca was even at the bottom of the barrel. It's 
seemed Carlos pretty close Lovina to three seconds. His first foul. Olivia into the game for the first time. 40-year-old captain. Nainoldi driving on Galvanini. Gets back from the left elbow and rattles that one in. Nainoldi now with 11 points. He cuts the lead down to nine. Certainly not panic time by any stretch of the imagination for Boca. But it sure feels like everything is going against them at this point. Mm, I feel like now I would Raven, be right now. <laughs> Raven Barber didn't think that pass was going to him, so he ducked. The pass went out of bounds. I think it was Vildosa that tried to dive and save it in bounds, but it's going to be Flamengo ball. Get a good look at Scott Machado and Franco Balbi. Balbi, a longtime player on the Argentine national team. Playing in the heart of Argentina's biggest rival in Brazil. Balbi bounced to the post. Olivinha gets it back out. Now Olivinha sets the screen and the attack by Luzada. Reverse. Oh, what a pretty finish by Didi Luzada. I was expecting a kick out to the corner on that one. He just looped it up and under. And the lead is back to 11. Inside four and a half minutes to play. Raven Barber spinning his way. That shot won't go. He wanted a call. Did not get it. Yeah, I'm I'm into the slow game for the rest of the for the rest of the game, five Flamingo. At least until Boca shows they can catch it up. Now Balbi for three, until that one was way off. Yes, but that left his hand. A little hesitation there by Vildosa, off the square and in. Again, the lead back down to nine, but you can't just keep trading baskets with Flamengo either. Maybe every second or third possession you get a stop, you get a three. Oh, and a hard foul. That's going to be on Jose Vildosa. I'm not sure what he's having the conversation about. Well, if they're calling this on the shot. Well, you yeah, know what? See, I don't think he made the... contact with him. We saw him swipe well, that was... arm. Uh, I think he just whiffed. And that's what he was saying. Hey, I never made contact. <laughs> when I was watching the feet of the other, the offensive player there, and one of the teammates on Boca motion for a travel, I think uh, if they're going to call the foul on that, I, I don't think that player was going to shoot. I don't know if I like continuation. They would have had to travel in order to get a shot off, in my opinion. I can definitely see that. So Machado to the free throw line. He's two of two from the strike tonight. This is that one. Concern on the faces of the Boca Juniors faithful. Second free throw missed. Minoldi can't corral the rebound. Oh, I thought that went off Minoldi. They're going to say that went off of Kyle Manfield. Missed. Now 
Machado driving baseline. The shot blocked by Minoldi. And did they call that a foul? He did. The wide eyed consternation. Well, that sure looked like it was all ball to me. Yeah, that's. As a, as a general rule, close to the basket, I always want my hands up. If, if my hands go out, it just makes it easier to make a call. I've got a real great argument if my hands are straight up in the air, but there's no way I could have made contact because, you know, here are my hands. That's what I'll do if I ever do get called for a foul and I had, I had my hands straight up, as we saw earlier. I just stand there with them still up and kind of look at the ref, you know, like, okay, does this look familiar? <laughs> Second free throw by Machado straight through. You get a lot of those and the scenario I just explained where my arm definitely did go down while I was in the air, but when I'm showing the ref, they are both straight up. I see that oh, all course. the time and I've definitely been guilty of it. <laughs> no, my arms were up the entire time. Guerrero misses badly from three-point range. Yeah, I think at this point the shooting percentage is so bad from outside for Boca. If I'm the coach, I say, hey, let's try to get something going to the basket just so we can see the ball go in a couple times and then we can get back to the shooting. Boca coming into this one, 29% from the arc, 35 of 119. But they are the ones struggling from outside tonight. Today, I should say. Another three from the corner, another miss. Raven Barber the rebound. Mainoldi for three, that one misses. Another rebound for Barber. Move by Mainoli. He wanted a foul, and he's awfully close to getting teed up there. Because he turned around and demonstrated to the official. He's, he's had a lot Boca to say the last few here. They've, they've traded back and forth with Flamengo, and they do again as Devon Scott gets the easy dunk. He's got 13 now. But you see on that last possession for Boca, they shot two threes missed. And then when they got something going towards the basket a little bit there, kind of the mid post area, they, they get a basket. So I'd like to build on that. I'm taking wide open kick out threes if I get them. But for now, if I, you know, if I'm just dribbling into a shot, I'd like it to be a mid range or get something down low. Shotman to Barber, Maynoldi for three. Another miss, but that's the kind of three yeah, you like. Exactly. Th those are the shots I like. That that was a pretty good shot. You can see it just kind of went in and out of the rim, but uh, especially that was the guy who had just made the last shot. Uh, so I'm definitely a fan of the hot hand uh, theory. Hard to say that anybody on this team has a hot hand right now, but we'll we'll take one. One May basket is the hot hand right now. Flamengo turns it over and now another whistle. Not sure what that signal was by the official there. Called a foul on Kyle Manfield. So now Shotman to Barber. Back outside to Guerrero. Guerrero needs the cutter along the baseline. It won't go for Minoldi, but he'll go to the free throw line. And I think if Minoldi didn't get the call there, <laughs> I think the veteran may have found himself teed up because <laughs> you could tell he was immediately starting to protest that he didn't get the call.
since Flamengo led at 50 to 42, eight points. Two teams have just traded baskets back and forth, making the lead from nine and 11. Now we're back to and nine. This has gone on for about five say, minutes now. Which is what I want if I'm Flamingo. That's why I say I slow the game down and I don't give the other team as many opportunities to, to possess the ball. And again, back to 11. Balby hits the open jumper. He's got 14. And Oldie for three. That one's good. Now we're back to eight. Inside 30 seconds to play third quarter. Balby has it. Manfield rolls, but the passing lane was not there. Shot clock now at five. Balby on the drive. Shot was no good, and a foul called. be on Balbi. I'd just like to quickly thank Minoldi for making me seem as if I'm clairvoyant. I mentioned earlier getting inside. He had the shot, the inside shot, got a couple free throws, and then hits a, a good three-point shot. So just like I said, basically. Locked down a 3-2. Guerrero for three. Oh, no good. But Boca will go to the fourth quarter, trailing by eight. 61-53, not an insurmountable amount for sure. But Boca's got to get some offense going. They only scored 15 points in that third quarter after only putting up 18 in the second. So now it's an eight-point lead for Flamengo as we look at the shooting numbers. Boca Juniors a woeful 19% three-point range. Individually, Raven Barber, two points for Boca. Juan Guerrero, two points, three boards, four assists. Leo Mainoldi now 18 points on 6 of 15 shooting. He's 3 of 11 from the arc. Carlos Schottman, no points on three shots. Sebastian Vega, two points. Jose DiFilippo, one. Wayne Langston has nine. Marcos Mata, 8.7 boards. Manuel Rodriguez, two points, and Jose Vildosa, nine points, five rebounds, four assists. For Flamengo, Martin Cuello, three points, Guy Deodato, eight, Didi Luzada, seven, Scott Machado, six, Kyle Manfio, four, Franco Balbi leads the way with 14, Balbi also with three assists, Gabriel Galvanini, just three points, Devon Scott, 13, Scott also with 11 rebounds. Mike Tavares, three points. Boca actually leading the rebounding battle, 32-29. Just five turnovers, though, for Flamengo in this game. Nine for Boca Juniors. Andrew, I know we've talked about it several times, but... Boca's got to get some stops. They can't keep trading baskets with Flamengo. Right, they're they're looking a little flat. They showed some life at the end of the quarter there. Uh, but at this point, if I'm the coach, I'm just trying to figure out something that gets me momentum. Uh, defense, in my opinion, is always the easiest thing. I, I don't need to make a basket. I just need to stop you from making one. So if I can get some stops, that helps me. And it leads to opportunities for me on the other end. Um, so that's what I like, and then I'm going to stick with the strategy that I had said a little bit earlier. I want to get some inside action first, and then we can go outside on the offensive end. We shall see what Carlos Duro draws up for this fourth quarter. Again, welcome in to all our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV. South America on DirecTV and around the rest of the world on the BCL America's YouTube channel. Alongside Andrew Hunt, my name is Craig Fada. First of two games that we'll be bringing you today. 
The second one will actually be tonight, Sao Paulo and Nacional, 9.40 p.m. local time, 7.40 p.m. Eastern time. And a turnover? Yeah, just collects the rebound and hit. just, he just lost it. He, he didn't have a handle on it. Let's see if he, I think maybe he just didn't, yep, careless. Yeah, This. he never got the <laughs> rebound. I'm, it's the Saturday Basketball Academy. I hope we've got some uh, <laughs> kids watching this instead of their cartoons because there's a lesson. <laughs> Sorry, that, that player was not trying to shoot that. He was looking to pass and wasn't open, so he just put it up. But you got to grab the ball with both hands, secure the ball before you take off, kids and, and adults. So Martin Cuello scores, and now Gabriel Galvanini whistling for his third foul. <laughs> and if you'd have told me to this point of the game that Gabriel Galvanini would have three points and three fouls, I would guess that Flamengo would be down by 10 points. Well, and I'm laughing because he he got called for that last foul, and it appeared to me that he asked the ref, what do you want me to do, play with my arms behind my back? And then he kind of shook his head like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I assume the ref may have said yes. And that's what he proceeded to do that last possession. He, he bodied up the, uh, the offensive player with his arms behind his back. Deodato for three, splash! And now the biggest lead of the game for Flamengo at 13 points as they look to step on the neck of Boca Juniors and put them away. Langston, shot blocked, gets the rebound, puts it back up and in. Good work by Wayne Langston under the bucket. Langston now with 11 points and five rebounds. No call either way as Galvanini puts Mainoli on the floor. And do they, is, yep, is they the, teed him up for coming? a flop. I think he... he got a technical oh, foul on the flop. Oh, they called that a flop? I don't, I don't know that I thought it was a flop. I thought he got tech for talking to the ref. It almost looked like to me that he went over there and said, hey, yeah, just go ahead and give me a tech. He didn't shoot a free throw that I can tell. I thought I saw a technical foul called, and he certainly made the signal for the flop. Now Shotman with one on the shot clock, puts up the floater off the glass, banks it in! And he's gonna go to the line. Apparently there was no technical foul on the flop. And I'm not sure about that one either. Unless they're gonna say Manfio ran under it. Yeah, I think he was just a little late getting to his position on that one. Shotman completes the three-point play. And he's got his first three points of this contest. Deodato. To Balbi. To Galvanini. Open three. Passed it up. Goes behind the back into the lane. Turns it over. Langston, his shot blocked. Galvanini behind the back again, takes it all the way himself. Ooh. Fancy. Yeah, that's what Galvanini can do the whole game. We just haven't seen it in this one. So that foul is going to be on Carlos Schottman, his second. I think Schottman I think he flipped veteran. that up with the left. <laughs> Shotman, the veteran, should know there. If he's going to commit that foul, he can't let that shot go up, at least 
not up that easily. He just needs a, a quick stint at the Andrew Hunt Academy for basketball. And uh, I'm going to show him how to, how to really foul. And everyone will notice that. My partner said Hack Academy. Hack. Hack, yes, I did. So the lead's 10 and another miss. And Boca under 40% shooting as a team now. Galvanini working down against Vega goes reverse and now look who's come to life Gabriel Galvanini he's got seven now I feel like he's he taking the advice 12. that I was giving to Boca Mata a little too deep on the reverse but there for the cleanup is Wayne Langston Langston now with 13. The deficit remains at 10. There's Galvanini. They're going to feed him because he's hot now. And then he makes a beautiful bounce pass to the streaking Scott Machado. Lead back to 12. Shotman the pass to Langston. Now Vega hesitates, puts up the three, and scores. back into single digits. Six minutes to play. Boca needs some stops. Galvanini nearly loses it, trying to back down Langston. What's the call here? And a late, a late, late whistle. No. I guess there was no. more contact by Langston than I thought, but that's a perfect example of that for the call, keeping your hands right where they were. But in Langston's case, that literally was right where they were. Galvani to the free throw line. And this is the first. Langston right now because, saying the ball don't run. Yep. <laughs> it's just what I was going to say. I guess he needs to miss a few more for the ball not to <laughs> not to lie. Galvanini hits the second and gets the lead back to 10. 5.45 to play fourth quarter. And Boca takes time out. Yeah, that, that result means it was a half truth. Mm. <laughs> and Andrew, if you're Boca here, I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to do offensively. The shots just aren't falling. But what can they do defensively? Because they're just trading buckets with Flamengo. They've got to get some stops. Yeah, defensively, they definitely need to, to stop the ball. And I was actually checking here to see what the offensive rebounds are, are looking like for Flamengo because uh, that's something I'm always checking out. They only have six on the game, so that's not terrible if I'm uh, Boca, but I always want to limit, you know, it's a percentages game, so the more shots I give you, the better chance you have at shooting. So I want to limit offensive rebounds for the team, make sure I collect the ball, take care of it. Turnovers play into that as well, same, same kind of uh, mindset the more i turn over the ball the more you have it if you're my opponent so limit turnovers let's see that too turnover wise yeah bocas 10 i if, if you've listened to any of our other games i'm pretty happy with 10 turnovers in a game and they're on pace to be right around that you know we've, we've still got some time to play but uh you know they're not at 16 or something like that so those are two things limit possessions and then just uh really close out on people and and force them into the help uh, off the perimeter that would be the keys to to finishing out this game on a on a good note i think bill dost they still have a chance at a, at a win here yeah absolutely oh langston 
hesitates goes up and Kyle Manfio swats that one into the Rio de la Plata. Shotman catch and shoot three from the right wing, and that is good. Shotman showing up would be nice here. Yeah, he's got six now. That's what Shotman can give you. And this, Again, he this is good on defense. Here for large stretches. We, we talked about defensively five. what to do. Balby turns oh. and shoots, scores. Those shots kill you. You play great defense, you get them all the way down late in the shot clock, yeah. and take a tough shot, and it just goes in. So disheartening. Langston draws the foul on Devon Scott. I mean, I guess you can trade buckets with him if every other one is going to be a three-pointer for Polka, but the way they've shot from beyond the arc tonight, you certainly can't count on that. Yeah, the, the percentages say no to that one. You get a look at the 31-year-old American, Wayne Langston. First free throw, no good, and... That's another thing that Boca cannot do. They can't miss free throws down the stretch here. Raven Barber from Edgewood, Maryland, went to Mount St. Mary's, finished up in 2013, played in Canada, Sweden, Colombia, Portugal, Spain, Israel. He was the rookie of the year with Halifax in NBL Canada. I believe back in 2014. Barber got his hand on that pass. Now Galvanini spinning. Doesn't get it to go. There's a stop. Vega gets it back. Now driving on Galvanini. Kicks it out. Vildosa. Tough shot there, but he gets the rebound. Shotman from way outside. Get a whistle here to clean up the floor a little bit. Yeah. A couple players go That's... down. Yeah, you mentioned earlier trading baskets. This is uh, what I've alluded to a few times. If I'm in the driver's seat here like Flamengo, I, I know that even if we trade a three for a two uh, every, let's say, 30 seconds, the math doesn't add up. I still win. Even if yeah. I'm losing, so that works out to two points a minute. Uh, I, I lose about nine points here. Nine, nine points would be a tie game, but, you know, again, it's it's unlikely they're going to make a three every time I make a, a two. So even at worst case scenario, I'm looking at a tie game. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. I just want to take my time here and get good looks at the basket. If I get good looks at the basket for, say, five shots the rest of this game, so not that shot, <laughs> I got to think I'm going to make at least a couple of them. And now that offsets the uh, differential I just talked about. Are Boy, they, the are they saying was, they keep the ball? The shot clock was going all wonky at that end. The ball went above the backboard again, came down behind, not sure it touched anything. And I'm not sure if Carlos Duro is talking about the shot clock jumping around from 24 to 45 to 0 to 14 back to 24. Duro saying he wanted timeout. But he has been whistled it's, for the T. It's Boca's basketball, right? That's that's what I thought he was upset about. I thought for some reason they were saying it was Flamengo, which no, I don't. I don't think it should be. Yeah, I, I'd like to see the replay on that sequence of events there. Balbi hits the free throw. Yeah, if they ha if Boca has the ball, I don't. I don't know what they were complaining about. They're 
There may have been something they didn't like, but in that scenario, I just say, we'll deal with that later. I have the ball. Let's go. Shotman hounded by Balby. Now we're in the corner. Three up and on the way. Miss. Galvanini the rebound. Things now starting to look dire for Boca. Balbi trapped. And he throws it off Barber, but it stays in bounds, and Boca keeps it. Shotman. Ildosa. Open look for three from Mata. No good. Boca cannot buy a bucket from outside. Seven of 32 for 22 percent. Now Machado wheels it back around, burns some more clock. Drives on Langston. Out of bounds. It's going to be Flamengo ball. 2.9 on the shot clock. Timeout by Flamengo. Kyle Manfio trying to cool off some of the players on the court. Yeah, we've, we've had a, a little weather report at some of our other locations, but now we've got a morning game in a new location. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you seen what our, what our humidity is like there? I would think the morning, no matter what, is a little bit nicer than the evening. Well, you would think, but that's not the case. It's 79 degrees in Buenos Aires right now with a humidity level of 92 percent. Oh, that's, that's like the worst we've seen. <laughs> I was, Certainly, I was way off. off. Humidity level goes, that's for sure. Right. Get it is summer down in South America. Quite hear what Gustavo Conti is saying. As the noise here in Estadio Luis Conde continues to rain down from this arched cement roof. Boca Juniors needs to rain down some points. <laughs> Just a little bit more humidity, and it's just going to rain down. <laughs> hey, you're not wrong. Finally get it in. Oh, and that's a tough catch and shoot there. Nothing Boca could do about that as Franco Balbi with another nail. He's got 19 in the lead back to 11 inside two and a half minutes to play. Shot there by... Jose Vildosa. Pass stolen by Mata. Up ahead to Shotman, he lays it in. Yeah. I don't understand that position. You, 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 they set up that high screen uh, with the post player and they go towards the basket. You can do that same thing with, you know, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. I just don't understand when I have this kind of lead, why I wouldn't just take up a little bit of clock. At this point, now we're, we're close to two minutes. I can literally just turn the ball over on a shot clock violation on every possession, I win. So, I mean, I'm not too worried about scoring, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the basket. What I'm looking for is when I drive towards, like I say, about 10 seconds left on the shot clock, I take whatever shot I get. Now I have a chance to potentially get an offensive rebound. I kick it out. I take more time. Uh, so e either, either scenario was good enough for me. No doubt Flamengo in the driver's seat. He's going to manage the clock. Not turn it over. Easy baskets to Boca. And they'll have this one sewn up. 
Yeah. Only, the if only turnover I'm interested in is shot clock violation. Still qualifies as turnover, but in this scenario, I'm fine with it. If Flamengo wins, they win Group C and they eliminate Boca. Flamengo wins, they will advance along with Nebraska Maccabi. That will make tomorrow's game between Flamengo and Nebraska irrelevant. We've seen some pretty good irrelevant games so far, though, so. Yeah, we have. Still, still pretty fun to watch, even if they don't necessarily mean anything. Boca nearly oh, yeah, stole well. it away. Shot clock down to five. That's exactly what you were looking for. If not over three. Oh. <laughs> that one should just about do it. Deodato with the shot clock winding down. Puts Flamengo up by 10. 138 to play. Mata with the easy play. That's just soul crushing. That's, I think, three shots that Flamengo has made with around three seconds or less left on the shot clock. You, <laughs> you've done everything you wanted to do if you're Boca, force them into tough shots, and then they just make them. Run off the clock. Lego turns it over and Boca and their fans asking for a sports play. Foul. And they're not even going to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's eight. No, it Shotman drives and kicks it out. Three on the way from Goldosa. He knew that was way off. Wayne Langston is there for the putback. Langston now with 16. And this is a possession game with 105 to play. I, just, I want Boca to just get a couple of steals and just nail some three pointers. Let's make this interesting. This crowd deserves it. Inside of a minute to play. Fans here at La I think they're loud. Rica. They're louder now than they have been. To, yeah, they're trying to will Boca. Boy, it looked like Luzada stepped on the sideline as he began that drive. And now a turnover. Mata for three. No. that you wanted, maybe a little bit too far. He could have taken one dribble, perhaps. And now Luzado for three. There was a whistle before that. Boca, Boca didn't really have great possession of the ball, even on that possession. Langston yeah. kind of corralled that long rebound, almost lost himself, threw it ahead, and then the person that dribbled the ball there, they, they, they never really had control of it. And then Mata ends up with it. Mata had a pretty solid-looking shot. He was stepping into the shot speaking oh never mind I, I've got a, an, a, another academy lesson a bit later if we have time foul on Gildosa stops the clock 23.1 yeah, just again for, for fans casual players and future all stars uh, when you're talking about three-point shooting it's possibly my opinion I think I could probably prove this or maybe there's a basketball data out there the best three-point shots are when you don't have to move as much so if I can stay looking at the basket so for example Mata on that last shot that's why I say he's stepping towards the basket so his momentum is forward for example a running fadeaway three-pointer we're going away from the basket that would be very difficult but when I'm stepping towards the basket, I don't have to move my head. I can keep my eye right on the rim, catch the ball in rhythm and shoot. Those are the best ones. So I mentioned earlier those wide open looks that we wanted from Boca. 
that that's what I was talking about. I got my feet set. There's less movement. All I have to do is focus on the shot, similar to a free throw. Two big free throws there by Scott Machado. Langston scores with 15 seconds left. And I think the hourglass is about to run out on Boca. 15 seconds, they trail by six. Certainly not impossible, but pretty much needing a miracle at this stage. Yeah, it's it's tough to to see that there's going to be three possessions here, as Flamengo has the ball currently. So there's one, and Boca needs two to make two three-point shots, assuming that they keep uh, Flamengo from from scoring. Now, if they get a steal here on the out of bounds, which is pretty unlikely, but uh, that you know a quick steal and a shot that makes things real interesting. Other than that. It's kind of tough. They're, they're likely going to have to foul if they can't. I probably pressure and try to look for the turnover. Once the ball's in, though, I, I foul. And right now, if I'm the coach, I'm probably trying to let them know who the, the worst free throw shooter is. And we might be able to look at that to some extent here. For Flamengo. Let's just look at... Got one... <laughs> they've got... They've got... So, at least so far today, four of their players are... Pretty good, the worst being 75%. They haven't shot a lot though. If they have one player that hasn't shot at all, that's that's probably my pick for who I'm gonna foul if I if I need to. So 15 seconds to play. Flamengo to inbound. And there's the foul by Shotman. He's going to put Machado on the line. Machado win this game six of eight. Came into this game five of eight. We get a good look at Marcos Mata, 37 years old, captain for Boca. One, one make here pretty much seals the deal. Yeah. Gets it to a three possession game with 13.7 to play. And there and, it is. And now that I've made the first one, it probably doesn't matter, but I'm even a guy that says, go ahead and miss the second one so they have to start the clock. If he makes yeah. it, they take the ball out and they can roll it up the floor. If he misses, they have to touch the ball, therefore starting the clock. But he's just going to make it. And... 85 77. They, they know the game's over. Lob inside to Langston. He gets the bucket. And a timeout call. Langston now with 20 points. Followed by Langston. It'll be his fourth as Boca continues to battle. They know they need a miracle here. But as long as they keep it within two possessions, they still have life. Of course, any more time elapsed off the clock without them scoring. Or if another one of these free throws goes down to get it a three possession game. Whoa, finally falls in. Both free throws good, and, and now nine. that's going to nail it. Well, I don't know. The nine-point play kills you here. <laughs> Scottman's shot from near half court misses. And this one goes final. 87-79. Boca did everything they could to try to catch up, but they just didn't get enough stops down the stretch. Boca put up 26 points in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, they gave up 26. So to say they went basket for basket with Flamengo, 
Doesn't get any more accurate than that. They needed some stops and just did not get very many down the stretch. As we look at the final numbers on this one, for Boca Juniors, Wayne Langston, 20 points, seven rebounds, three assists, two steals. Leo Manoldi, 18 points. Marcos Mata, 10 points, eight boards. Carlos Schottman, eight points. Jose Bildosa, 11 points, six rebounds, nine assists. Raven Barber, two points. Jose DiFilippo, one. Juan Guerrero, two. Manuel Rodriguez, two. Sebastian Vega, five. For Flamengo, they are on to the quarterfinals, along with Abraka Maccabi. Celebrate on the floor. Ide Odato, 14 points, four rebounds, a couple of key buckets. Even the three-pointer down the stretch. Gabriel Galvanini largely quiet for this one, but had some key buckets in the fourth quarter. He also had five rebounds. He lose out of nine points three boards. Scott Machado had 12, Kyle Manfield four. Franco Balbi led Flamengo with 19 points. He also had four assists. Martin Cuello, five points. Devon Scott, 13 points, 11 rebounds. And Mike A. Tavares, three points for Flamengo. Boca wins the rebounding battle, 41-37. Just 10 turnovers in the game for Flamengo. Really took care of the ball well. Just 11 turnovers for Boca Juniors. But Boca shooting from outside, seven of 35 for 20%. Pretty much sunk them in this game. We'll let you roll the highlights and remind you that coming up at 9.40 p.m. local time, 7.40 p.m. Eastern time, it's gonna be Sao Paulo and Nacional. We will have that one for you in the USA on FanDuel TV and South America on DirecTV and around the rest of the world on the BCL America's YouTube channel. For my partner, Andrew Hunt, my name is Craig Fada saying thanks for watching and so long for now.